So in heterodox scheme also in the lower low energy, this action, the field content should reduce to the heterodox scheme. Okay. Except that you have to throw out the side data, which is a field. Uh, so that will be this action of the gauge will be the action that will be the gauge action. Yeah. Mm. <coughs> this will be a gauge fixed version of the diagram which worked out. And
we allow me c s to be minus 2 and then sum over p equal to 1 to infinity 1 over p factor Okay, so this will mean that at least when you write a three level action, for example, that three level time term will solve it as to the minus two, this will also have a GS to the minus two. And at three level there is no further factors of GS inside the level. So that just makes life a little bit easier. So there is something else. I have to point out which I have implicitly used, but which I have to be little bit So this object that we have written here, that if you exchange VI and AJ, you become a minor factor of minus one to the power gamma i gamma z. Where gamma i is a class one kind of Okay, this is clear, right? That if that said you will take a body to a symmetric, but of course, if the glass one out, then the minus. And similarly, under a tilde i equal to a tilde z, will be for minus one to the gamma tilde i. Gamma tilde i will be the last one parity. But we will also use a slightly more general notation that if we exchange the positions of the I with A tilde Z, okay, which as defined I have taken put the, the NS sector first, Ramon sector next. But I could choose to put NS and Ramon in our In that case, the convention is that we pick up minus 1 to the point. So you can start with this definition that I have given and then define the same product with arbitrary strictly of NS and R sector states anywhere by using this definition. Right? Because you can start with arbitrary ordering of NS and R sector and then by repeated application of this, you bring the all the R sector on the right, all the NS sector on the left and pick up the appropriate sign that you get by. The and it is in that sense that this has to be algebraic, right? Because when you write psi to the p, psi has both psi n s and psi r, right? And you will arbitrary combinations of psi n s and psi r when we expand it out. And you always have to keep in mind that this is always true. In this case, of course, because psi is last one even, okay, it doesn't matter. Okay, that any exchange you just pick up one. So for Louis, we have to take one of the vertex appointed to the eye. <coughs> the vertex appointed that you are doing the function. That's it, yeah. That's the way you have, I mean, the sign convention that you have used. That you have to put one vertex appointed to the eye. <coughs> now let me recall what the claim was. Claim. These are the gate invariant three level action. is given by one over G square.
So the zero means that it's only three level. That's zero. And I have written the sum over P from 1 to infinity, but actually it's from P. Three onwards. One and two part two is just magic. So there is no one point and two point function of the And let me write class then. So the claim is that this action has a gain invariance, and after gain fixing, we get back the action that we had earlier okay, with whose Feynman rules totally the current state. And let me also remind you that in this case, I classical belongs to h minus one plus h minus half. I think that classical belongs to h minus one plus h minus three half. Both are ghost number one, both are ghost number two. Both are ghost number <laughs> And no, these look like these are one. So these are one. Okay, so these are all constant fields in H. Form of QB. So QB will not change. QB is given one set for part of the world shift. So QB there is no nothing that you can do in Q. Because you know, earlier you had imposed a condition that B0 plus B0 power on side policy, right? This one doesn't have that much. And the claim is that starting from this, okay, there is a gauge invariance of this action. And after gauge fix, you should get by the overtime. That's the thing. So, fixing this will be the gauge fixing. This is a gauge will be gauge condition. Okay. But the, no. when write the action, you don't write gauge condition. <coughs> right? So, the gauge invariant action basically tells us that the side classical belongs to h minus 1 plus h minus 1. No further constraints. It can go somewhere too, but no further constraints. Okay, in particular, this, this constant is not here, okay, which is what we had in the earlier action. B0 minus B0 bar is there. Yes, B0 minus B0 bar is there, there is there, the last part of the definition of H. Yes, so both B0 minus B0 bar and L0 minus L0 bar are there. Okay. So to Verify this claim, we will first consider the coordinate part of the action, and the free part. But uh, when writing this delimiting action, yes. why do we need the information of uh, any first quantized uh, universe space? Because any action when you write down, right? Well, uh, if you, otherwise you could have written down the electron of this action, right? How do you know there is a strength theory action? So you, have, you need the set of strength fields. The set of fields that you use must be coming from the underlying theory R2, which you are trying to second part. And the kinetic operator typically is the Schrodinger operator, the analog of the Schrodinger operator. Right now, for field theory, second part is field theory for the Schrodinger equation. Right? You write del del t minus h bar square over 2 f times uh, box. And that comes because the Schrodinger equation has that operator. Okay. So that's the kinetic term of the first part of the So the idea is that given a specific string of application which has corresponding key, this is the string field for the action which describes the string fields around that factor. And, and the action. Here we will want and we will do anything. Uh, yes, we will want and do anything because it's not a sphere. Right? So one and two point function on the sphere vanishes. <coughs> so quadratic action. Is 
Otherwise, we just track cycle in a classical. So this action has daily invariance for the following form. But Q0 minus 
the other parameter is C0 minus. Okay, this you can easily check. If you have C0 minus, only expand out in modes, and it has no C0 minus. So if you take QB with commutator C0 minus, QB and commutator C0 minus, it doesn't vanish. But it gives you something whose matrix element inside two states, each of which are added by B0 minus, that vanishes. Okay, so that's why this is true. And so that basically means that inside this matrix element, you can pretend as if QB and C0 minus are Okay, even though in reality they don't have to function. As far as the matrix element is a easier function, it's as if they are active. Okay, and that's what you have to use. Because otherwise, for example, for the very case, you will get QB lambda beta, right? Now you don't have QB next to QB, you have to pass QB to C0 minus to actually get QB square. <coughs> and then you have to use the fact that when you pass QB to C0 minus, you have this.
So let's check this. So B0 plus QT lambda is B0 plus QT minus M. B0 plus B0 plus M plus psi plus M. But now you see that you can take this B0 plus and commute with it. Anti QB. The anti the once B0 plus has come on this side, it vanishes because B0 plus square is 0. So you are forced to pick out the anti The anti of B0 plus of QB is L0 plus. So this gives you minus plus L0 plus QB plus So, we have one C0 
factor coming from here, C0 minus. So you have to use QB to peak the other C0. Right? Otherwise, the matrix element will just vanish. Is that clear? Because you need C0 and C01. Okay? Or in the plus minus condition, you need C0 minus and C0 plus. So we need, so in this case, basically QB is C0, L0, plus C0, Y, L0. This is the only term in QB that continues. Plus terms which vanish. So now we get C0 minus QB becomes half C0 minus C0 bar and C0 and 0 plus C0 minus C0 bar. So this gives you half C0, C0 bar and 0 plus C0 bar. Okay, there is a minus C0 bar C0 but in exchanging, right, there is C0, C0 bar. This is L0 plus. So using this factor of half, the action then can be written as y plus 1 over 2 j square. Cycling the classical c0, c0 bar, l0 plus l0 bar.
Adela era foarte amică. Și pe fuzi. So this basically is supposed that the gate is fixed action. In this gate, okay, this is what is called a single gate. That in this single gate, once you gauge fix, the action reduces to what we had out here. The interaction term doesn't seem invariant in No, it is not invariant in This we have to make sure, so for this whole procedure to make sense, we have to make sure that there is a generalization of this gauge transformation and that the interaction term is And that's what we will discuss in next. This argument will still go through as long as the gauge transformation takes a form QB lambda plus something, okay, which involves nonlinear terms. We can still use this argument. Okay. We can find lambda, for example, iteratively. Okay, such that you may be 0 plus i or 0. So if we can show that these gauge transformations that we have introduced, the delta psi classical equal to QB lambda tilde, sorry, QB lambda, and delta psi tilde classical equal to QB lambda tilde, then if these can be generalized to full nonlinear gauge transformation. Then the argument that we have given will show that even at the interacting level, this action will reduce to the old action in this case. Is this clear? So the, so the main issue now is to show that the gauge inference holds at an on interacting at an interacting level. Yes. So in the interaction term where you have this omega c 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 omega
So what is the equation of motion? So linear is equation of motion. One can show that this basically gives you two B. This is a cycle that you minus two B. C0 minus here doesn't play any role. Okay, you could have moved the C0 minus here. But then apply, you can just apply D0 minus from the left. Okay, and you remove the C0 minus. Okay, but, so this is the question. And the gauge equivalence, of course, you have already said that psi classical is equivalent to psi classical. This QB lambda. And cycling the classical is equal to cycling the classical. Just give me that. So, how did you get the last condition to be the side classical? Oh, because I just use this and substitute right here. Because QB comes to G. Right? So, I wrote just G QB cycling the classical. And then I use the fact that QB cycle like classical is zero. So that gave QB cycle as well. Is this clear? Yeah, and the, the second one comes from the equation of motion with respect to side classical. That's right. Second one comes from the equation of motion. Then uh, the interaction term will have. Yeah, interaction term will have other terms. But when you look at the physical state spectrum, right, you look at only the, uh, uh, the quadratic one. Right? Like for example in uh, standard mode, right, when you try to actually look at the spectrum of physical states, you forget about the interaction term. <coughs> Just look at the quadratic <coughs> term and figure out the spectrum. And the interaction term tells you what the interaction between these physical states. So you basically use the same uh, process. These are three levels physical states. Then, of course, at two levels, they can get renormalized. Okay. It's the same story as in quantum physics. So, what this tells us is that physical states are essentially elements of realistic homology. Okay. Because realistic homology is precisely this that you remember that the state is realistic invariant, you decide classically equal to zero. Up to equivalence that psi classical is equivalent to psi classical plus QB on some. Isomorphic and generic form. 
Yeah, zero momentum there is some extra steps in some set. That's what they generate momentum is the isomorphic. So basically, you can double the number of physical states. Okay, that's what this is telling us. That's just because we introduced cycle. Uh, exactly. That's just because we introduced cycle. So the point is at this level of the hierarchy, if you don't have this interaction. But even in the interacting theory, half of these physical states will remain. Okay, hence they are not seen in any physical process. Okay, so these will basically remain. Exactly.
this statement here. So this is a state. Okay, this state belongs to h minus 1 plus h minus 3. So what I want to define a state is to specify a scenario product to every possible state. So you take an arbitrary state phi naught. But because if you are looking at the inner product of this state, this belongs to h minus 1 plus h minus 3 half. So phi naught has to belong to h minus 1 plus h minus half. Right? Because h minus 1, h minus 1 inner product is not zero, and h minus half, h minus 3 half inner product is not zero. So you take a video of phi naught in h minus 1 plus h minus 3 half. And this inner product with this, by definition, is this. This cardinal. The cardinal we have already defined already. So this defines this object. This can. No, no, this is just a definition of this. This is a conformal field, you say. This is just a case in conformal field, right? Right. And we are defining this. I mean, a multi-reader function of states in conformal field. Right? The maps of products of the n copies of the Hilbert space to the Hilbert space itself. By this thing. See, this is just a conformal field for the equation. Okay. If you can draw certain substance or a model. This is a known knowledge of certain field. So this is just definition in conformal field. This h minus 1 and this h minus 1 is different. <coughs> this is different in so what sense? Because the side inlets belong to this and the side belong to that. Uh, well, the point is this. Yeah. At the level of conformal field theory, conformal field theory doesn't have to be low or sign and side. Right? So as far as conformal field theory is concerned, this is just a statement of what this state is. Right? And then you are going to make use of this in writing things in terms of sign and side. And so this is just a statement in conformal field theory that they pick n states in conformal field theory, each of it belongs to this, sorry, each of it belongs to this subspace. Then this generates, the algorithm that I have to think that generates a state in h minus 1 plus h minus 3 half. And the definition of this is that we take the inner product of phi 0, okay, which is any arbitrary state in h minus 1 plus h minus half. We get this. So this at this level it doesn't know about psi or psi. This here? Phi zero also belongs to h minus one and h minus one. Yes, but phi zero also has to be on to h minus zero. Or even phi zero belong to h minus one. Because if phi zero doesn't belong to this, then it has to be zero. So now it came. The delta is classically zero.
So here you see that we have replaced the gauge transformations by adding appropriate nonlinear terms. Okay. This was the related as gauge transformation that we already had earlier. Now we have added some psi dependent term, psi plus k dependent term. There is really no zero term. Okay, I have written it in the, from zero onwards because in higher genus there will be contribution from n equal to zero also. But because you are looking on the sphere, it starts only from n equal to one. Okay, it is easy to see, right? Because we know that this is non-zero only when there are three entries inside, right? Which means that this for this to be non-zero, the n should be at least two. Right? Otherwise, this is not zero. So here, if you take n equal to zero, then there is only one object, right? lambda, yeah, which of course uh, doesn't be uh, zero. Probably. So is a claim here. Okay. So the claim is that this action that you are making is invariant under the infinitesimal transpose of this kind. Okay. So I should have said. Lambda and lambda kilo should think of an infinite solid gauge term. It is only the first order. Right? Zero means that it's the you are using pre Here you have a zero, right? Zero means that you are picking only a zero, a zero point. See, this definition is general. Okay? But when you put zero here, that means on the other side you are also going to see. No, side. That's the important point. That you see that the transformations. Yeah. So the, the point is that it, so you can decompose this into two different kind of transformations. Okay. The lambda transformation and the lambda Taylor transformation. So the lambda Taylor transformation doesn't have any nonlinear term. Okay. Lambda Taylor transformation corresponds to set lambda equal to zero. That is just QB lambda Taylor. It's a lambda transformation which becomes nonlinear, which has this all these additional terms, okay, which will be. Okay, but uh, then in the sign in the classical, yes, the the adding term, uh, why is it needed? Because we we want to show it for the introduction term. We don't have any sign in the there. Yeah, but we will see that it is needed. Okay. But when you add two, we will see that it will be. If I change psi by this, then kinetic term is also changing. If I don't change psi yes. by this, then yeah. 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 Right? And that matches. So that's why I think that must start at least from n equal to 1. Okay? But I have written n equal to 0 because in hard genus it will start from n equal to 0. So this is the more general change. Okay. So you have to verify this. So let's try to verify first lambda t Taylor transform, which is easy. Okay, lambda t Taylor transform is delta psi plus is equal to zero, and delta psi t Taylor class is equal to q b lambda t Taylor. Okay, the lambda t Taylor transform is going to be lambda equal to zero. So this is the full sort transform. And you can easily check that it basically reduces to the proof that we had already given for the quadratic action because our, this term doesn't tra transform on the lambda t Taylor So the lambda transform. Is an that we want to check that these invariants, these are really invariances, right? Because lambda and lambda are independent parameters. Okay? This is uh, you are talking to linear order, so to, 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 to infinitesimal parameters. 
Okay, independently we say, could there be seed variation on the lambda field transformation? Where we said lambda equal to zero, and then under lambda transformation, where we said lambda field equal to zero. So if we said lambda equal to zero, then this transformation is simply this, and that falls automatically because of the quadratic parties. So, so the invariance of the lambda transformation requires some what? Okay, so and this in fact requires one of the key identities. So let me write down the identity. Follows from the following identity. This is the sign, plus or minus one. This is the sign, theta, minus one. We are
phi này and gamma phi r này cái gì đó là phần này là phần này So let me try to explain this formula a little bit. So the left hand side of the formula is easy to understand. You have a product phi 1 to phi n. You are applying q b one at a time. Okay, and sum over all possible sides. Let the sum over n terms. <laughs> On the right hand side, there is sum. So what is the sum over? The sum is over all possible ways of splitting the phi 1 to phi n into two sets. The first set I am calling phi i 1 to phi i l. The second set I am calling phi j 1 to phi j. How you order? It's immaterial, you have to pick some order. Okay, you don't sum over different order. Okay, because only the set is in Okay, it's not an ordered set, so you don't sum for, for example, phi 1, phi 2, and phi 2, phi 1 separate. So that's the sum over. Then you have these two products, and this sigma is a sign that you pick up. Okay, this is the same sign that you pick up if you start with an arrangement of the following form: e0 minus phi 1, phi 2, phi n, and then try to rearrange them. To bring it into the form of phi 1, phi r 1, phi i 2, phi i l, then g0 minus then phi j 1, 2, phi j. Okay. Namely, that if you start from an ordering like this, the sign that you pick up in bringing it to an ordering like this, okay, you can see that phi i 1 to phi i l come first, then comes g0 minus, then comes phi j 1 to phi j. Okay, that's exactly the sign that is sigma. And there is also a sign picked up because B0 minus is passing through phi R in the basis step that is separated it and is minus 1 to the law of phi R. Minus 1 to the power. Minus 1 to the power? It is coming to the end speed and minus 1 to the power of phi R. Exactly. So there will be many minus 1 factors which are the products of. And that is what we need for that. In relation to the identity, will be used for the Yes, I mean, that, that identity will be used to prove this thing. So I'll now indicate how this is proved. So the left hand side. Let's look at the left hand side. So left hand side is proportional to this R T M N omega C is equal to G equal to 0, so omega G M N and 0 M N is also 0, minus 0, and then this is minus 6 plus 2 M plus 2 M by 1. Phi n and let me write this sum over i to be i. Right? This is understood, but this means that there is qb1 that acts on phi1, there is qb2 that acts on phi2, then qb3 acts on phi3 acts on phi. Qb1 basically means there is a qb acting on the phi1 universe space. qb2 means there is a qb acting on the phi2 universe space and so on. So left hand side is clear in that, right? It's clear from here. Okay, this sign that you are picking up that, that you are getting is because the qubits are being commuted through phi. Okay, that's why we get this minus 1 to the power of gamma 1 plus gamma 1 plus gamma 1 minus 1. If we keep track of the signs we are you will find that this is what we see. But you know that this is equal to integral r0 mn d omega. This 
same time is proportional to integral del r g r zero n omega Okay, this is the boundary of R. This is by by means of square. Okay, you have D, D omega, so you maintain it. Okay, you get integral omega the boundary of R. So you have to understand what the boundary of R is. So for that you have to record what is the definition of R. R. So if you go back to PGMN, then to recall that we have these solid lines which come from the region that we cover by going together the lower order vertices. And then you have the dashed line which is the missing region. This is R right? These last lines are R theme. So this will mean that the del the boundary of R theorem is opposite to the boundary of this last line. The boundary of RGMN, where RGMN ends, the something else takes over. Okay? So the boundary of RGMN is the boundary of whatever is being contributed from lower order. So let's try to examine this in on the sphere. Well, I'm erasing this, but you probably have it in your notes. So if you take a diagram like this, these are not contained in R theta. Okay? This is something that covers all the things. <coughs> and this propagator is integral, integral 0 to infinity ds integral 0 to 2 pi d theta times to d minus s times s to the plus to the minus theta. And also there are the zero to zero part of the These are the these that are things that are this So what is the boundary of this? Right? Because the boundary of this is coinciding with the boundary of R. Right? So one boundary of course is A goes to infinity boundary. Right? That is not R. Right? That's the degeneration that goes all the way to the actual boundary of boundary space. But the artificial boundary that this region has is the AC equal to zero. Because in AC equal to zero, nothing special is happening. Right? It's not an ultraviolet divergent point, this is not I mean there's no degeneration. So AC equal to zero is a point like this. Okay? That's where RGMN has to take over. Is that the elementary boundary? But if it becomes an elementary part, right? So at AC equal to zero, right? it has to form. Smoothly map up with elementary points. So this means that the boundary of RGMN essentially is a boundary of regions like this, and those are the AC equal to zero boundaries. Is this clear? And there are many such regions like this because I mean these are if you call them I1 to IK, IL, J1 to JK. 
for each diagram of this kind of boundary of this kind. Right? That will be some boundary of RGA when that we are So from this you will see that the boundary of RGA <coughs> is essentially the AC equal to zero boundary of this diagram. Okay. But AC equal to zero boundary of this diagram is essentially the result of doing this with this. And to zero length problem. And that's why it will be this part which just goes away. So S integral is gone, right? Because we are looking at the S equal to zero one. Because the S integral is gone, okay, because we are trying to define this g omega, the omega that we have to integrate. Right? This tangent vector is gone, right? The tangent vector that was proportional to del del S, we don't is gone already, right? So that's not part of the tangent vector any part of this boundary. So which way that from the V0, V0 part, the V0 plus V0 part part will just go ahead. The theta integral is still there. Right? So you have to insert because you are, uh, uh, the, the omega is integrated to the amnesty direction. That means that the V0 minus V0 part, part must still be there because that's what provides contraction of the tangent vector in the delta theta. Is it up here? So, a general structure is that we have product of an amplitude on this side and amplitude on that side with some complete set of states inserted. And also a V0 minus V0 bar inserted, but no V0 plus V0 bar. And if you look at the formula that I wrote down, that size has this structure. Okay, it's a product of two curly brackets. There is an infinite set of states that are summed over, the basic states phi r and phi r c. And v0 minus is acting on phi r c. And we also have to insert g because that was a rule for the problem. Right? In the Ramon sector, you have a high zero. Okay, so that's why that's the origin of this g v0 or v0 minus g phi r c. Okay, now you could have also applied v0 or phi r, it doesn't matter. And the sum of complete set of states will get the same. And then the science you can figure out. Okay, it's basically the rearrangement of original amplitude into this product that produces all these factors. Sigma, for example, you get from that. The overall minus sign was because these two boundaries are opposite. Exactly. The overall minus sign is the minus sign in the front. Right? That is because these two minus signs are opposite. Okay? And the factor of half that was there, that is because <coughs> these two, you can exchange these two, right, and save that. Okay, we will be double counting because there we are summing over i1 to i here and j1 to j k separately. But the exchanging the two okay, will be actually the same diagram, that's why the half. Overall minus n is because the boundary of this is opposite to the the boundary of the problem. Okay, that's the origin of the overall minus. Exactly. So from this side, S equal to zero is going to approach the S is decreasing. Right? And from this side, it's it should go into the S equal to zero. Okay, S equal to zero. Can you repeat this? Zero insertions. Yeah. So there. Are, so general rule for inserting B zero or B is right. Is that for every tangent vector you have to insert a theta. Right? Every tangent vector through sulfur is a right? Now here there is a B0, B0 bar insertion because that you are integrating both about DS and theta. That goes away. The DS integral goes away, right? Because you are supposed to integrate the omega with one less degree. But over a subspace which is one less than right? On the, on the boundary of R. So the contractual the del del standing vector has gone away. And the del del is standing vector, the corresponding insertion of the zero class of one. That's why that has gone away. But the del del theta is still there, you are still integrating over theta. Right? And that's why the zero minus the zero bar is still there. And the L0 equal to L0 bar projection is also there. And I didn't explicitly write it down. But the phi r that basis is over L0 plus L0, L0 equal to L0 basis. So 
for higher genuses, we will also split in all possible genuses at G1 plus G2 is G and also add those handle terms. Exactly. That's right. Okay, so for the higher genus, that's your splitting into different genuses, of course, is not very difficult. Yes. Right? Because in any case, this the expression of the particle can include some overall general. Right? Yeah. But the handle term will give you an extra term. Basically follows by taking you have to wrap with phi zero on both sides, phi zero c zero minus on both sides. If we do that, then the left hand side becomes the left hand side of the Using the definition that the inner product of phi zero in this fabric is the Cardi bracket. And the right hand side becomes the right hand side. So, the only uh, the extra thing is that in this sum, right. yeah, you are basically inserting a complete set of states. Right. This g phi 1 to phi j k, I can write as phi r. Times phi r c g phi one phi z one phi z two and then you have to basically manipulate this little bit to break them the four times. Phi zero phi i one to phi i 
and g of phi k1 to phi zero. Okay? So you don't have two terms, okay? one where the phi zero is inside this. So that's why that symmetric factor is automatically taken care of. We don't have the half of it. Okay, earlier we had a double counting, that's why we have put a half, now there is a double count. And now I'll give it as an exercise to take the lambda gauge invariance. Unless there is something in the auditorium, but I don't see that. 